Alright, Taylor. All right, everyone. Oh, we are okay. going to like visit that. with a couple friends here today about banding. I know this is a task that not everyone loves to do. So we are here with our friend Michelle Savage. Hi, Michelle. Hi. She's going to give us several tips um, and let us know about some different tools that you need to make this job easier for yourself. Um, and then she's while she's doing it, she's basically teaching a 4-H'er, Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Hi. Um, how to do this and how to improve her skills. So, Michelle, will you share with us some of the tools that you want before you even start? Yes. You need a comb, okay. a pack of bands. To Do you like to match or contrast the mane? Um, it depends on the horse. Um, for sorrels, chestnuts, I like to match. Bays, if you're really good at banding, then you can do the white, but you have to be really good. Why do you have to be really good? Because it won't line up if you're not good. If you're not good, and it'll yeah, stick the, up, it'll and show. it will look very bad. So if you're not very good just starting, I would definitely use whatever color of bands match your horse. So bands, comb, um, a couple clips. Taylor has this cool little belt yeah, thing that she got she for does. Christmas. So got all sorts of stuff in it and the for clips braiding. will keep the mane that you're not banding out of the way yep. so those are just like hair clips that you could probably get at sally's beauty supply or someplace similar yep or you can even get the classic ones at walmart meyer this is a latch hook which would be used for braiding right mm -hmm. so that's a different video that we will show you here is a good thing to have at the end of the show um it's a seam ripper and you can seam rip the bands out or braids so that you can just get at like Joann's or any sort of craft supply store and it is for ripping seams, but it just, you don't have to worry about cutting the main. Um, that is a lifesaver. All right, we have other kinds of combs, awesome. And then what's this tool? Do you use this, Michelle? I do not use that. This okay. is just like another comb, like you can just, oops, sorry, It can buddy. help you space out your yeah, bands, right? Maybe you if you're a beginner. Like that to okay. hold the main back. I don't use one of these, but you, but you can. definitely can. Okay, and then we should meet Chevy. Hi, Chevy. This is Chevy. He is young. He's only been banded like once. So yeah, literally once in his life. So he's a three-year-old. This is his second horse show ever. So um, it's definitely easier to braid or band a horse that is um, super chill, used to this. But you're going to learn this is like real life. We're going to learn on a youngster that will probably wiggle and move and make life a little difficult. So. Yep. All right. So you don't... You can space bands out kind of however you want. Is it the smaller the better? That's what a lot of usually. people say. Is that true? Um, Not always. It really depends on the horse's mane. Like, I've never banded him before, and I don't band all the time. I mean, I've banded for years, but... Are you a little out of practice? Then? I am. I haven't banded my horse since last year because... Okay, I've kind of been bad and I've been paying somebody to break or ban my horse. Well, that brings up a really good point. So Michelle has decided this isn't a task that she necessarily loves to do and she recognizes that it's a lot of work and time. So she's willing to spend her hard-earned money to pay someone to do this service for her at shows where she has a thousand other things to do. So as 4-Hers, keep that in mind. There is a ton of entrepreneurial ideas here. Um, in braiding and banding. So that yes. is actually one of the reasons why we're teaching our little Taylor here to band, and she's also gonna work on learning how to braid tonight. Um, it's a thing that she wants to pick up and be able to do on her own horse to save money, but I can guarantee you there's a bunch of really busy show moms that will be willing to pay for this service on the yes. first day of a horse show rather than having to add it to their to-do list. And when I was young, I learned how to braid. I'm a little rusty now because I haven't had an English horse in years, but I did learn how to braid when I was young. And when I was showing heavy on the circuit, I would go around and braid people or ban people's horses for money to help offset the cost of the show, help my parents out yeah, or just earn some cash for me. And people so. pay anywhere from like 45 Ooh. to $70 for a braid job, wouldn't you say? Yeah, that's like average. Um, banding is usually... Anywhere is cheap to like 25 is usually like the cheaper end up to like the girl that I use. She is a professional. She can whip out a mane in 15 minutes and it oh looks absolutely gorgeous. And I pay her $40 and it, she does the best banding jobs I've ever seen. Um, so it really just depends on how good they are. So you could imagine how many horses she could get done on the Friday of a show. Yeah, she you whips really... through, like she stays up all night and whips through mains and she does 
20 to 25 horses a night. But she's also a professional. <laughs> so he's moving around a little bit. So they might not be like lay as flat as. Is there special tricks that you do to get them to lay flatter? I do. I like to hold them down. So when so you're you like pull banding them, like hold them. So see how I'm not lifting up yep. on it. Okay. Oh, like constantly. Constantly oh. pull it down. Hold on. He's like. And this again, this clip. is real life when you're working with a horse oh, that's not super broke. This little clip thing is a little weird. I don't usually use this, so it's kind of hard to put it. So, I hold them down. Don't ever let it lift up. Sorry if it's hard to see. No, it's working pretty good. So you don't want them too tight, but you don't want them too loose. I mean, you gotta have like, I usually will count with mine. It depends on the bands though. Like these bands have been going around like maybe six times or so. Okay. Um, with stretchier bands, sometimes it's like eight times. And if they're too loose, they don't hold nice and tight. If they're too tight, they can actually make them stick up more, right? Yeah. Or they're just super hard for the owner to get out. Yeah. Like the girl that the girl that does my mares bands, she does them really tight, but she's a professional. She does this for a living. Like this is her. She had told me this is like her only source of income. Wow. And she goes from show to show. And she can make her super, super tight. Like, I always have to use a seam ripper to get Lucy's out, or I will rip Lucy's mane out. Yeah. Um, but... It pains me when I see people just pulling the rubber bands out. Yeah, of like, me. we have to use a seam ripper for Lucy to get her bands out. Um, or else she won't have a mane left. <laughs> but that girl can do them super tight. I just try to do them medium. So we do have Chevy loosely tied oh. and Taylor here is entertaining him a little bit and keeping him still. But this isn't the time to give the horse like a hay bag full of hay. Um, they're often gonna move around more eating. Mm -hmm. um, and you pretty much always have them tied a little bit. Oh, but uh, most horses won't just stand still for this task. Yeah, it really depends on the horse. You know, there's seasoned horses out there that basically that, fall asleep with this. Yeah, assembly. like my yeah. mare will fall asleep. She's super easy, but she's also a seasoned show horse. She's a little bit older. Um, and you can see whether or not you think it's yummy. Michelle keeps the bands in her mouth. It's I just do. the easiest place to hold them, yeah, honestly. Some people don't. I don't have a bag here. I'm kind of doing this last minute kind of a thing. So I don't have like my, I'm just using Ella. Because she wants to teach us and we appreciate that. <laughs> I'm just using all of Taylor's supplies. But, um... Taylor's a newbie, but she has all the right supplies to do the job. Yeah, <laughs> so she will learn and be able to do it. And then for Chevy here, the horse, remember that we're working on, we're actually going to trim his mane a little bit. Not a ton, yeah. but probably a half inch. I'm probably going to cut it. So maybe. These are kind of sticking up, but um, I'm going to cut it to like probably here. I'll probably cut like half inch to an inch off. And then we'll put a sleazy on him and yeah so he'll wear a sleazy or slinky or whatever you call it basically a lycra hood um a spandex hood whatever the fabric is um and first of all that's going to keep his bands clean because he's hopefully going to lay down and sleep tonight um but also it will help train those bands to lay down so that's a crucial part of the puzzle here we'll watch a couple more Okay, sorry. Does anybody have a stay as long as I do not. I'm sorry. In my mid-tech. Oh. Okay, Taylor. Yeah. Okay, Taylor, so you want to lay them down. So just keep whatever hand's holding them, just hold it down on the neck. So, like, that'll hold it down. Don't ever lift your hand that's holding the mane. So I say that, and then the girl who bans my horse at the shows, she holds them up, but they lay down crazy good. I don't know how she does it, but she this is probably another thing that I've heard is like if you just like girls that do their own ponytails, if you pull the bottom of the ponytail, yeah, and you kind of spread the bottom of the ponytail out tight, it will tighten up those hairs that are on the underneath yep. part of the band. So you go like this. Okay, so you kind of want to divide Chevy, it. Chevy, you have to work with us. And then you pull those and it'll kind of 
pull it, it should pull it tighter against their crest of their mane. Yes. Um, but you don't just take the whole band. No, you, you kind of do it in half. Sorry, mm. he's not cooperating super well. Yeah, so you take like the lower half of the band and you oh. pull it tight so that you tighten those hairs that are against his neck and, then and that will pull, down. pull the whole band down. That's like another. I've actually seen oh. people where they band um, like a half inch or so away from the crest yep. and then they take a latch hook or something and they flip the band back through itself like a topsy-turvy. So that's one way that um, can kind of make it, it's not conventional, but it is one way to make it hold against the neck a little better. All right guys, hopefully this was useful. We are going to come back with you with some braiding tips too. It's way harder <laughs> to braid a baby. It is. Or band a baby. Definitely. Looking good. Come on, buddy. Good boy. Okay. Thanks, Chevy. This is not We're going to visit with Hottie this next. This is going to be my best band. All right. All right, guys. We're coming back. We wanted to show you the finished product in the last piece of the puzzle. And Michelle is going to, okay, Chevy keeps putting his head up for us. Hi, handsome. Not yet, bud. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> there we go. Um, now Michelle is going to trim his mane to oh. the finished product. Although, honestly, after um, you put the sleazy on overnight and it trains it and they really lay down well, we'll you always it check it in the morning before showmanship and you maybe have to trim it again a little bit. So I just start in the middle and try to get a really sharp, good pair of scissors. You don't want dull scissors when you're doing this. Yeah, a good pair of sewing scissors is awesome to keep in yes. your... Yes. Get some from like Joanne Fabrics or something. And then you just go from there. Hopefully he holds still. <laughs> that already looks better. Ava, you need to hold on, honey. And typically, guys, if you're working with a youngster like our three-year-old Chevy here, um, the longer this takes, the further you get into the banding or trimming job here, the more annoyed they get, the more they wiggle, the tougher it gets. So be patient, take your time as best you can. Where are you left? Oh, they're hanging up kind of high. You can't get them right now, so just hold on. You don't need spurs for him anyway. You only need him for trail, baby. Ava, you only need them for trail. We'll be on the so. That was a good idea to start at the middle. Yeah, I usually start at the middle. It kind of gives you a good, I don't know, judge of how short you want to cut it. Like, I like really short veins, so this is probably even too long for me, but we don't want to chop all his mane off. I mean, he's got a good Yeah, mane. and if you... You don't want to cut it too short where it won't lay down. Yeah, so if you cut it too short, it won't lay down. And then if you wanted to braid this mane fairly soon, um, you definitely do not want to cut it too short or else it becomes pretty much impossible to braid. So, so we're going to cut it as good as we can tonight. But like Taylor said, we'll put a sleazy on him. So right now, Michelle is actually um, cutting the under hairs a little shorter than the hairs that are furthest from his neck, if you can tell that. That is what is really gonna help it um, lay down and kind of curl towards his neck. And you'll get like little pieces underneath that'll drop down. Yeah. So I always try to cut the bottom, the underneath shorter. Mm -hmm. And you'll, everybody will have a piece that, every horse will have a piece that falls in the middle of the night with their sleazy on. So, like that. Oh, yeah. So, there so are there's a the perfect pieces. example of what'll happen. Okay, so we'll trim those off. Mm 
and then here's some more some more pieces that kind of fell down basically Ooh. they were just like curly pieces of hair um, that were hiding in the back there so just use your comb see and that got more down so just use your comb to your just advantage and those hairs out yep and then you can cut it off this is looking pretty dang good michelle not too bad for someone that's rusty, as she said. I know, I haven't banded in a while. All right, guys, so if you want to add any questions in the comment section, we'll be happy to review those and answer as we can to help you do an even better job banding next time that you try. Thanks, guys. All right, everyone, as promised, we are here with Hottie. We have Taylor, our learning student again, and our braider is Megan Baines. She has most of the heavy lifting done um, and it sprayed it. I'm gonna go on the other side of you, Megan. Um, braided the majority of Hottie's mane. There are several techniques that you can use. Again, we're working with a young horse that's kind of obnoxious here, but we're dealing with it. Don't pull down on his head, he hates it, but if you can kind of just like hold the this away, maybe he'll stand still, you wanna try that? Okay, so Megan Don't said that you need to pull, these braids need to be very tight and pull down the whole time when you braid them. Um, and there's another technique, so Megan's doing that over here where you actually braid the yarn in about halfway down um, and use the yarn to tie it instead of the rubber band, probably a more traditional Way to do a braid, Megan? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, but um, it's sometimes it's most important to get the braid really tight, and sometimes I have trouble braiding the yarn in, so I don't do it like that. And they're a lot more difficult to take out. Oh. When they're okay. like this. It's way easier like this. Okay. So we're gonna watch Megan finish the braiding portion, and then she's going to just, teach us how to tie up the braids. So now them? you're snipping them shorter so that Just you don't have to worry about the little tail of them sticking through when you pull them up and around. So I will say here that Hottie's mane is really ideally short. not to the right length. So it would be a little longer if, um, if we had our choice of things, but we don't. Length just kind of depends on... Um, how thick the mane is too. Like okay. thankfully his mane's not very thick. Okay, his mane is not real thick. Right. Or else this would be quite difficult. We'd have really short fat braids, which would be really hard to do and hard yes. to tie up. So make sure that the yarn, if you do it the rubber band way, you gotta make sure that the uh, yarn is above the rubber band. Okay. Can he bite you? Oh man happening behind the scenes here getting bit do you want me to just tie a couple up yeah all right so so normally you kind of work like an assembly line and you put yeah. all your yarn on yeah she's gonna do it different for us so you need a rug hook a rug hook which can be got at like joann's or something yep okay we, we go through the top right okay let me get on the other side Oh, I don't. Hey, girls. So basically, you're just folding them in half. Yeah. And Megan pulls them down so that the little fuzzy end of the braid doesn't poke through the top of the crest of the mane here. The key is getting the braid really tight. If this braid's not, not tight, it's all going to fall apart. All right. So you cross underneath. And then just kind of pull a little to bit a to little, be a little bit of a, a little hump of the top of the braid. And then you just go around like two or three times. Yeah. And, do and then knots, double. Yep. Basically. That's it. She says that's it. Like it's like that's it. It's super easy. 
Honestly, my problem is I can't even get a good initial braid. Yeah, you can't do that. I then. could probably tie it up, but I can't do a good braid. Which is why someone like myself is happy to pay a professional braider. Which I no longer do anymore for this very reason. Because it's hard work. It's hard on your hands, right? Yes. I've been doing it yeah. for 20 years. But, so Megan, how much does a typical braid job um, cost? Um, I charge 60. So that's kind of the, I would say, would be the going rate. $60 per main. Okay. Sometimes if you're at the bigger shows like the Congress or the World shows they can be a lot more okay. upwards of 75 80. so this is a pretty good way to supplement your horse show income and i know that megan spent a lot I of time doing that, that since in her teen years 15. Oops. if nothing else you just take that 50 60 dollar cost off your own show bill right And then just like the banding horse that we looked at earlier, we will definitely put a sleazy on this horse um, so that his braids stay protected overnight. Um, these, the sleazy won't really help train the braids down. They're tied where they'll stay. As long as this horse doesn't rub. really rub his neck on the wall or something and really mess up his braids, that's frustrating. What are you doing? I know you've been doing that. And as a braider, when people come to me in the morning and say, oh, my horse rubbed a few braids, I will fix a few for free, like two or three. But if it's more than that, I mean, you gotta charge for it. Yeah, you should. It's not, your, it's not it's the braider's business. fault. All right, guys, we will come back when Megan is all done tying these up and show you the final product here. Here we have the finished product of Hottie's Braids. Looks like we missed the yarn. We'll have to trim that off. So the extra strands of the yarn were all trimmed short. And now he will get his jammies on to protect those pretty braids. 